You want a free Modern Horizons. Preview card? You look like a show host. What? A preview card for Modern Horizons? Sure, what's it gonna cost us? Nothing, like I said. Here, uh, take the card. Thanks, mister. Let me see this. <gasps> Whoa, thanks! I can't wait to show the guys! You guys are insane. Alright, so... We're super excited about this card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no more gesturing. I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivan Putt. And I'm Olivia Guesthos. <laughs> yep, still. And uh, we are Commander in. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. Um, we put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever, do we ever talk about three banned topics, religion, politics, and our microphone levels. I mean, and Hearthstone. Um, we do talk <laughs> about banned those. topics, not topics we talk about every time. <laughs> That's right. Um, we have a wonderful show lined up for you. <laughs> At the end of this show, we're going to do a new game. It's going to be awfully fun. I don't think Olivia and Shivam have uh, seen it because they did not go past the uh, bright I fuchsia not bars. I did past anything. I'm or, all good. I respect the rules. Yep. Yeah. And uh, as we know, Olivia did not go past or can cover it up well enough that she's not detectable. Um, we're going to, as well, preview a card from Modern Horizons. We're very happy to share this card with you. Uh, Modern Horizons, of course, has the hashtag MTGMH1, and we'll be using that when we tweet about the show. Um, MH1. That MH1. means there's going to be more than one Modern Horizons. Come Indeed. on. Indeed. Um, they learned their lesson from uh, Modern Masters 1, which was like uh, MMX, I think, or MMA, which was not confusing at all. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we were talking before the show, and Modern Horizons is uh, the innovation product, they call it. That's like uh, what the, the same slot that Battle Bond filled and Conspiracy oh, right, and okay. Conspiracy 2, yeah. Um, and uh, it, it is not, uh, we, we were hoping it would be Commander Masters 2019, but that, of course, was War of the Spark, as Olivia mm -hmm. first said. Yeah. Um, and Fair. this... This time the show has a pre-release, not the show, this time the <laughs> innovation product has a pre-release um, on June 8th to 9th, and it has an actual release date of June 14th. There are 249 new, new to modern cards in it. Wow. That's 254 cards total, so that must mean there, there's a couple of uh, flip cards there. Uh, basic oh no, lands. Basic lands, right. Mm. The five basic lands. Uh, plus one buy a box promo, which has never been done before with a uh, innovation product. Well, um, didn't didn't uh, Unstable have the uh, Earl of Squirrel uh, buy a box promo? Oh, because I have was an alt art Earl of Squirrel. It? it was either that or was it the pre release? I thought it was because I had to buy a box to get that guy. I don't know. I didn't buy a box of of Unstable, so I have like three. <laughs> <laughs> it was really su it was super fun to draft though. That I have, that set was amazing. I have three um, up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is though, um, yeah, no, this set's super interesting because it is their half of the set is going to be reprint. Uh, unstable. Yeah, half the set's going to be reprint. That's a puppy, and the other half of the set are going to be brand new, kind of like inspired by old cards. Cards. Is it half mm -hmm. the set? That's the numbers that I think Gavin was telling me. Hmm. It's like half and half ish, ish, uh, like including Sarah for the first time is going to be a planeswalker. Yeah, and we've all seen it, and she looks bananas. Yeah, it looks super good. And yeah, uh, I am super excited to see what kind of like inspired cards they plan on making, and to see if Ethan finally listened to me and reprinted Findhorn Elves, like I've been asking for three years. I'm just saying, Ethan. You know, 
<laughs> no, you promise. Is that for all the modern you play? I have one elf deck, thank you very much. Yep. And uh, it's missing one Finhorn elf. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you should have told me when you were in LA. I have uh, <laughs> plenty of Finhorn elves. Yeah, I know. It's it's. I I just want them to make a reprint of the one that was in uh, from the Vault Twenty. It was an alt art Finhorn elf that's only in foil, and I want a non foil version of it. And this is oh. the best place to put it, because modern can totally use another mono elf. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> I'm just um, saying. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they're not happy with their birds of paradise, right? Do they have birds in, in modern? I yeah, they do. It was in pretty in Ravnica. Okay. Yeah. And like um, one of the M sets. And, uh, so this set will be printed for as long as demand holds, apparently. And, uh, they the packs online, at least magic, the gathering online <coughs> will be sold for uh six a, a piece. Um, this, uh, does look like a pretty cool set. So, uh, before we get to the reveal, if you want to support the show, you can uh, share the podcast and the video with your friends. There's always a share link. You can smash that button and subscribe and ask for notifications every time we upload a new video. Um, mm-hmm. And and if you want to go to this step, the yeah, and if you want to go the extra step of helping us financially, uh, we have a Patreon, a GoFundMe, and a direct PayPal link, which you can now find. We've streamlined the process after many years. Shivam has uh, it just came up with. He said the other night, Yay. "Why don't we just put it on our donations page?" <laughs> what a concept! <laughs> I mean, we have a page at commanderandmtg.com yeah. forward slash donations, which now has all three methods of being able to donate to us, or provide for us, or to help us out. Even a buck a show helps us keep on the air, and get you know better lights, better product. And just keep bringing you content every week. <laughs> Phenomenal and now, work. Phenomenal it's just work. all in one place. So we don't need to keep yeah. <laughs> reciting the litany. Yeah. Uh, we, we can turn this from uh, two minutes of reading URLs to two minutes of talking about not reading <laughs> URLs. I mean, it's... Look, it's a win for everybody. <laughs> the irony More was content. not lost on me. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, while you're there, you can click on the merchandise link and uh, pick up a playmat or uh, probably even a shirt by the time this airs. Um, <laughs> hey. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we finally got our act together and all of our merch is in a place that you can actually pay money for. Crazy. Wait, we, we so appreciate all the donations, wait, basically all the ways that you can give money are now streamlined and like easy to find in one place? Uh, yeah. If you want to go, out. you just go to commanderandmtg.com. Bye, guys. It's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh and we uh we have to before we uh dive in we have to mention our fine sponsors they're actually your sponsors viewers and listeners and patroni uh because <laughs> we are working with quiver to do giveaway contests every month and uh the the details for the may giveaway will be announced in our next episode and um the uh last time in uh, the beginning of uh may end of april we did a giveaway for our Petroni, and that'll probably happen again. And so two lucky patrons have, uh, right now, uh, are walking around with some hot quiver swag. And uh, as usual, I have my quiver right here. These are fine. Mine is uh, the best color. It's purple. Yeah, my quiver is teal. It's currently uh, open, so I don't want to pick it up because all my decks will fall out. Yep. But um, it is a Hard fantastic... Hard to say, but mine's black. <laughs> yeah i know i mean like who could have thought naturally yeah uh no it's a beautiful case it holds many many decks and a play mat rolled up the thing is fantastic and fabulous we definitely hearty recommend it and we are for grateful sure. to quiver for sponsoring our show yeah they're really uh really good products frankly and uh we think all of you should have it which is why we're talking about it we are very picky about our sponsors um, so, uh, and of course, Shivam was the first one. He, he pointed out his quiver and he, uh, was sharing it online and it's a fantastic product and, uh, it, it really is good. So Family podcast, huh? One of these days we'll be able to do it without being 12 years old. Today is not no. that day. No, <laughs> I, I missed it entirely. Because, I must have uh, said. Shivam's showing off his quiver. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Innuendos for normal episodes. We'll save that for not the preview. Yeah. Someday <laughs> we'll do a Commander in After Dark. Oh, goodness gracious me. 
<laughs> uh, but today's a special day because we have a preview card. Indeed. Yay! And uh, our card was first printed in the Plane Shift expansion from mm. 2001. That's the second. Uh, that was the second bl- uh, set from the Invasion block, which was like the first multicolored block that they really did. Um, and Invasion and Plane Chase were both allied colors. And then the final one, Apocalypse, was the enemy colored block. And uh, it was also reprinted recently in uh, Masters 25. Oh, my. So, Phil, you don't get to do this very often. You want to read the preview card? <laughs> sure. Aw. <laughs> sure. Um, get him, Phil. All right. So, our preview card this time around is Ella Domri's Call for white and a green. Or actually, green and a white is the order on the card. You get an instant that says, search your library for a creature card. Reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, It's pretty awesome. It's a creature tutor that's at instant Mm -hmm. speed. So it's very similar to uh, Worldly Tutor, except uh, this goes on top of... Worldly Tutor puts the card on top of your deck, uh, and you're paying the white in order to put it in your hand. It's like a demonic tutor for creatures in white and green, which is pretty freaking awesome. And the Um, instant speed is no joke. Yeah. Yeah. Instant speed. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, Not bad at all. Like 10,000 decks on EDH rec. (laughs) And, uh, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. It's maybe one of the core staples of Selesnia colored decks or in any deck that's got green and white, just because tutoring for that crater hoof or tutoring for that (laughs) Terastodon or tutoring for, I don't know, whatever else you need to tutor for your utility combo card. Yeah. This is just like a fundamental tool for EDH. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's it like, really is. I mean, I'm happy because I need to get one of these. This is like a staple card. And I mean, it's fundamental. It's a creature tutor. Yeah. Now, Plus the nice thing too, is if you're uh, playing against some jerk mill deck, like I might have. At least it's going into your hand and not on the top of your library where I make it go away. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's I, uh, there's not a lot of hand destruction in EDH, I've noticed, so that's a lot a lot nicer. Lot, I mean, some some things make you wheel, but I yeah, I I haven't run into it too much, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. To the point. We see a lot of the wheel effects, but we don't see a lot of targeted hand destruction. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, if 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 it is, uh, it's like each player discards a card or multiple like cards. Like a specter or type like of thing. That. Yeah. I yeah, feel like exactly. I need to make a Disrupting Scepter uh, deck again. But <laughs> today, though, I was playing a deck, a, a game against my friend at work, and I had an Eladomri's Call in my hand, and he had Obnixilis in play. And you know what that Oops. says? That says <laughs> Eladomri's Call. You get says, to lose 10 lives. green and a white. Take Aww. 10 points of damage. But that's not Eladomri's Call's <laughs> fault. That's my buddy Ob's fault. Yeah, that's why <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, it is. That's why I gilded that buddy, turned him into a gold rock, and oh, the problem oh, was solved. That oh, that's nice. great. Plus, then yeah. you can use that uh, that that gold token for... Uh, Eladomri's call. Eladomri's exactly. Right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, that's Eat pretty cool. Um, yeah, this, this kind of goes alongside uh, Court of Calling, because it's a little bit less expensive to actually cast uh, the creature after you Eladomri's call it. Yeah. Um, Unless you're convoking, of course. Court of Calling is really sweet. Um, the instant speed is just really remarkable because yeah, you can hold up two mana just, then. Yeah. It's so cheap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you're holding that up for a disenchant or na- naturalize or whatever, you know. So is when it doesn't need to happen, then you're ready to go with Eladomri's to, to get mean, whatever you want green. right before You've your got, turn. Like, to end the game. Ways. Yeah. Yeah. If you're running green, you should have 10 mana by turn three anyway. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what are you worried about two for? You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you you pay two for this, and then you use the other eight to cast the Crater Hoof, and then you, well, okay, look, it's not always going to be Crater Hoof, but it's always going to be Crater Hoof. <laughs> Don't lie, it's always Crater Hoof. It's <laughs> I mean, it's or it's a triumph. Rare... Oh no, no, you can't just triumph. You I mean, want you to could triumph the Crater. Yeah, you could tutor up um, uh, Terastodon, which is my yeah, personal yeah, favorite yeah, creature. I do love nasty Terasty, yeah. but um, yeah, dude, so, Eldamri calling I don't one like thing. Green. I know you, you. You. This is once again we get a green card, and uh. Olivia. <laughs> Olivia has to first. I just want to talk about all the ways to like get rid of it or make yeah. it not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just like, well, you could counterspell it. Right. Exactly. Yes. 
But you don't count. You the could magic let somebody. Piece. You could let somebody play a creature with, a, or you know, search for a creature with Eladomri's play it, and then Cyclonic Rift it. That would make the card better. Oh. <laughs> don't yeah, you start, Chief. I got you to like Cyclonic Rift, and I will die on that hill, dude. Yeah. Well, you did die to my Grim Grin. I did. I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that is actually a really important point uh, for newer listeners who might not have run into tutors before. It's generally not a good idea to counter the tutor itself as mm-hmm. much as it is to think about what they just pulled and counter that. Because then they blow their tutor and the card. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But you have to be careful Crucial. because uh, people who are aware of that strategy will often <laughs> cast something that they didn't tutor for just to kind of draw that counter spell out. Fair. Because if, you Especially know, Demir Mages. If, if uh, exactly. If blue mages are anything, they're predictable. So, <laughs> absolutely accurate statement. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, we didn't say it, but this is being reprinted at rare. Of course, people already see the image. So, right. um, it's Unless rare. It's entire the radio. Life. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Unless they're listening to us on the radio. Oh, yeah. At which point yeah. they did not know that it was a rare. That's they right. So, know. the listeners who are listening to us can't <laughs> know that it's rare or don't know that it's rare until we said so. So, that's our card, Eladamri's Call. Um, it, it, when you have fun stories about what you tutor up, please tweet them to us. Uh, it, we're, we're always happy to hear uh, from our listeners, and especially when uh, they're talking about using our preview cards. It's a, yeah. it, 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 it still tickles every time I see um, uh, somebody posting about uh, our, our old friend, the Deadeye Navigator. <laughs> and, oh. Uh, oh, my favorite. And, or you know, so good. God Pharaoh's gift. <laughs> yeah, God Pharaoh's <laughs> gift. But, but you got, I mean, Dead Eye. Dead Eye. I mean, Dead Eye. Dead, Dead Eye, Eye is the bane mm. of the format. No, <laughs> it is not. And uh, oh, Trove of them's fighting words. Trove of uh, temptation is also uh, when people tell us we use Trove to do something that didn't result in our death. We're always impressed. <laughs> so, um. Now, are you two ready for, for this test? Yeah, uh, I was test. born it's, ready. Uh, listen, it's a test of skill, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so don't don't go too far ahead there, Shivam. I can see you. I'm not, I don't even have the show plan up. Great. I am okay. In it to win it. And we'll put uh, these cards up. And the idea is this is Exile Battlefield Hand. And uh, you're, you're, here's the setup. Your opponent intends to exile your graveyard. You can recur two cards, one to the battlefield or recast it, and another to your hand, right? So one Mm -hmm. card is going to the battlefield or you're casting it straight out of the yard, having an effect, and another Mm -hmm. goes to your hand. And then, of course, the third is exiled and it's gone forever. Um, So given the following deck, which of these cards would you allow to be exiled, return to your hand, and which would you put back on the battlefield? So you're mm. ready. Okay. As ready as I'll ever be. All right. So the deck is Niv Mizet Reborn. That's five color Niv where you get all the uh, two, two color colors. cards. From yeah. Right. Okay. It's it's a flying six six dragon avatar. Okay. Uh, costs one costs Wooberg to cast one of each color when Niv Mizet Reborn enters the battlefield. Reveal the top ten cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Pretty cool. All right. Also works really well with Deadeye. It does <laughs> indeed, doesn't it? Really See? well. You Not just the keep... bane of the format. Friend that's of the right. format. Deadeye that's Navigator. F- indeed. The enabler of Enter the Battlefield yes. effects. <laughs> yep. Along with Panharmonicon. So, uh, oh God. now which of you wants to go first? The first deck we're going to talk about is a brawl deck using Niv Mazet Reborn. Shivam should go first because I only know Command. All right. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Great. This actually uh, plays to another of Shivam's uh, strengths because uh, here are the cards. Are you ready? One of these must be exiled, one of these goes back to your hand, and one of these goes straight to the battlefield. Are you ready? Bring it on, buddy. The first card is Guild Globe, and uh, you can, uh, Shivam, since you're thinking about this, you can go straight to the page there. 
When Guild Globe enters the battlefield, it's an artifact. Draw a card. For two and tap, sacrifice Guild Globe. Add two mana of different colors. Right. Hmm. The next card is Mana Geode. For three mana, when Mana Geode enters the battlefield, scry one. Tap to add one mana of any color. And the third is Prismite. For two mana, you get an artifact creature golem. It's a 2-1. And it has two of any color. Add one mana of any color. So you're paying two to get one mana of any color. So, Shivam. And I say to one of your specialties, because it's artifacts, and I know how much you love Brea and Sahili. Yeah, so if I'm playing a Niv-Mizzet deck, niv yeah. obviously, you love multicolor decks. Like, mm-hmm. I is Niv in play, um, or am I just assuming that I've got a blank board or what? Um, I think he's just the commander, so that's like your... Here's your cue on what the flavor and what this deck is doing. Sure, yeah. And okay. so you can you, you set up the situation if you want, but one of these gets mm-hmm. exiled forever. One of them comes back to the battlefield, and one of them goes to your hand. Well, the exile one's easy. I would exile Prismite without even thinking, because casting a paying two mana to get one mana of any color is a terrible rate, and yep. that's like one of the worst filters we've gotten because it's a two one. It can die to anything. It, a yep. stray, uh, you know, twin bolt will just take it out of the table. Now the question is, do I want the mana geode on the table or do I want the guild globe on the table? I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, see, I think you'll have your turn. I mean, because the thing is, they've both got kind of the same effect, right? You've got, like, Mono Geode, when it comes to play, it uh, scries one. And that's about half a card's worth of equity there. And Guild Globe straight up draws you a card. Now, I think I would probably want to have the uh, Mono Geode on the table because it costs three. And then I can use it to play the Guild Globe to draw that extra card that I just scried either to the top or bottom, right? And I think uh, that would set up my draws better. And then also let me kind of um, pull Niv out into play and start doing the shenanigans of the deck. So I think having Mana Geode available is great because it's just a Mana Rock automatically gives you Mana. Guild Glove mm-hmm. is like a one and done, but it does give you two. So I think being able to use the Mana Geode to cast a Guild Glove is better than um, the other way around. Hmm. And Prismite, just GTFO, you're in there because I need a body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's been fun. Thanks for playing. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody uh, had to go, buddy. That was you. Any controversy there, Olivia? No, actually, I, I yeah, I agree. Prismite was an auto, auto. Yeah, exile. that was like, the... like that. That required almost no thought whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, Prismite was just like, man, I hate that card. Nah. Uh, yeah, a lot of common uh, mana rocks and or dorks. But I would totally build a new Mizzet Brawl deck though. That guy. I feel like there's a lot, especially with Chromatic Lantern. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of gross things mm-hmm. to be done. Yeah, this is uh, this is the card I'm most excited for. I'm definitely going to build that Brawl deck. Um, <coughs> okay, the next one uh, should go to Olivia, and it's an EDH deck. How about that? I know this stuff, kind of. <laughs> so remember, it's a Niv-Mizzet Reborn deck. Uh, okay. And... Uh, one of these cards will go to exile forever. One of these cards goes to your hand. And one of these cards goes straight to the <laughs> battlefield. So, the first card is Angrath, Captain of Chaos. For two red, black, red, black. You get a okay. legendary planeswalker, Angrath. Creatures you control have menace. And for minus two, you can amass two. And it comes with five loyalty counters on it. So you get to amass twice. That's pretty good. Um, the second one is, uh, this one is near and dear to your heart. And I considered <laughs> saving it for the, the third Ashiok dream render Buddy. for one and a blue back, yeah, one and a blue, black, blue, black. So three converted mana, mm-hmm. legendary planeswalker, Ashiok spells and abilities. Your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. It comes with five loyalty counters, and for minus one, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Then exile each opponent's graveyard. Maybe that's what's happened here to that's, you. That's, that's so spicy. I hate this card so much. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. And then the third is Bioessence Hydra. 
for three and a green blue, since you're playing with planeswalkers, clearly, with these other two choices. This is a Hydra Mutant 4-4. Four, four. Bio Essence Hydra enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each loyalty counter on planeswalkers you control. Whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on planeswalkers you control, put that many plus one, plus one counters on Bio Essence Hydra. So clearly you're playing a Super Friends deck. That's why you have Angrath and Ashiok in there. But so, I wouldn't be running Bio Essence Hydra if I was doing that kind of Super Friends because these are both Planeswalkers that lose counters and not gain them. Mm, mm, good point. I have a feeling there might be a lot of creatures in here. I mean, Angrath giving you a mass, which gets you a creature, and then giving your creatures menace, which is helpful when you have creatures. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Ooh. This is interesting. I, I mean, for me, I like playing Mill, so I would want Ashiok. <laughs> like, that's something I'm keeping. Uh, hmm. Interesting. And so let's see. Niv, real top 10 for each color pair. Take one that's exactly those colors into your hand. And the rest mm -hmm. at the bottom of your library. I don't know. I feel like, hmm, this is actually kind of tough, I, at least for me, because I see the the merit behind bio essence hydra and obviously like you said you are probably running super friends if you're going with this many uh planeswalkers hmm i don't know i would never run simic so that's probably why i'm i'm having a <laughs> like that's not a thing i do uh i know, I know like having uh played a lot of limited this weekend or excuse me a lot of sealed that ashiok does work because yes. removing options from your opponents is always good and yep. this 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 makes a lot of options disappear. I think I'm gonna have Ashiok out on the battlefield because I get to minus one somebody. I get to mill whoever made me have this heinous decision and then exile their stuff. So I do like that. Um, <laughs> hmm. The retribution. Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Something about uh, you blue-black players and retribution. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's not retribution. It's just reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Good point. Reaction. It is just a reaction. Um, yikes. I don't know. I think actually that um, bioessence is probably the better choice in your hand based on what we're what the assumption is running with this deck um my only hesitation is that yeah angrath gives you your creatures menace but you can only let's see you can get one four four zombie army out of him and that seems like you might get more out of bio essence hydra, hydra because as you're rebuilding that board then you get to start pumping that and making it huge so i'm gonna say uh i want ashiok on the field i want bio essence in my hand and Angrath, it's been fun. Thanks for playing. It's going to be exiled. All right. That would be wow. my call. Uh, Shivam, any, any controversy there? Any Tell me how choices? I'm wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, though, like, I was ready to do that, but then you made the right decision. <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing is, though, like, <laughs> look, I'm not a fan of being on the other side of an Ashiok, but I will definitely yeah. play Ashiok. And right? in this case, I think that you were basically right. Like, Ashok on the battlefield immediately will, like, um, at least it'll put a stall to them doing some right. stuff. Like, And Bioessence Hydra is so brutal. And if this is any indication, like, it'll right. automatically come into play with five, like, as a 9-9, nine -nine, just off the top. Yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. that's bananas. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. so, um, I mean, look, dude, I was playing Sealed this weekend on Arena, and I got hammered in one turn by a 28-28 Bios and Hydra. So I'm just saying that card can get out of control real, <laughs> real quickly. I, uh, yeah, and I mean, just the fact that there's two other Planeswalkers present here. I mean, it's, oh, it, yeah, dude, it's a five-color it. deck. It's safe to assume that you're running a, right? and a like, lot of Planeswalkers. If this is a Niv deck, I'm assuming that you're going to try to hit and get like four Planeswalkers off of that top. Because why wouldn't you, right? I mean, yeah. It's going to be gross. Yeah. Look, Plus, I don't think the, Angrath I, does a ton with the kind of hand that you're looking at here. Yeah. I think the other thing, too, is that looking at Angrath, it's great that he has Menace, but Biohydra is giving you Trample, which is really what you're looking for with Menace anyway. Right. It's just, I mean, it's Trample unless you have two. 
<laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you, you're getting that from the bioessence, and it's going to come out bigger than the zombie army you can make. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Why is bioessence hydra only a rare? That kind of dumb. That because kind of all the Simic things are absolutely bonkers, and they're just like, eh, you know, it's a 68 cent rare. It's like, but tokens and escalation really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, bioessence hydra is a great finisher, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. I think in this case, that would be the... That's how it goes. I like All right. This. So you, are you both ready for the third one? We'll do... Yes. Uh, and, and this time, I think you'll have to negotiate with each other to come up with this. Okay. Um, mm. And so this third one is another EDH deck, because this is Commander in. Uh, Brawlin is a different series. Um, <laughs> so uh, we have... Uh, uh, once again, we're, this time we're going with monocolor inclusions in the deck. And we start with Parhelion 2, which is six and white, white for a legendary artifact vehicle. Uh, it's a 5-5. Five, five. It has flying, first strike, and vigilance. And whenever Parhelion 2 attacks, create two white... <laughs> two... I, I'm stunned. I can't even read it. Two four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. And it has true force. Why it's white, so basically... and you play it with what? Anointed procession. You Thank you you, uh, and double you drop a Sarah Angel in there and then yeah. crew it. And... Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> yeah. Make like thirty eight more Sarah Angels. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second card is Bolas's Citadel. For three mm -hmm. black black black, you get a legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. That's a weird way to say that. Uh, you may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. And for tap, you can sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. Now, can I just <laughs> stop you for a second there and just mention how insane this card is? Like, yeah, this card is crazy. You can literally but I don't win think just... it's insane in this deck that we're playing. Well, well wait, wait. And uh, the, Vivian's Arcbow is the third card. For one and a green, you get a legendary artifact. It's the legendary artifact series, see? For X and tap, discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost X or less <laughs> from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Which one gets exiled forever? Which one comes back to the battlefield? And which one goes to your hand? Okay, so hear me out. It, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if we just put Bolas' Citadel on the battlefield, you win. Like, you can easily just churn out 10 cards and put them onto the battlefield and then sacrifice them and win. Like, it's... That card I don't is, think I agree with you. I mean, I would definitely put... I mean, if I was to do this, I would exile Arkbow, I would play Citadel, and I would let parhelion fester in my hand because who cares <laughs> what do you think uh, see <laughs> like because i just so broken so here's here's like what okay what were your criterion that we set up when we're dealing with this okay intends to exile your graveyard okay that's yeah. what, that's what i think these three are in your yard okay I don't. I don't buy the Citadel. I really don't. What? What? You have forty life. You have forty life. You can play I anything. Don't, if off they're the top. exiling my graveyard and I have these three cards already in my graveyard, we are deep in a game, my dude. That or somebody a just milled the top eight? three cards. Yeah, but still. Okay, so then if they just milled the top three cards, when am, am I going to sit and wait for like me to have six and ten That's things on Citadel the board to start annihilating? Maybe. I would say Parhelion goes in for free. Then I get Vivian's Arcbow, then I can start sifting and putting out crazy stuff and just like Yeah, but if Parhelion's him. sitting there by himself, how are you going to crew that for? I'm going to tap, I'm going to pay X, tap, and discard a card. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to put creature cards with a mana cost of less than X out and crew the Parhelion. <laughs> and then I have a lot of things attacking all of a sudden. I feel like for whatever for whatever reason, I mean, like I understand Bolas's Citadel. I just, yeah. I don't know if with the the Niv thing, if we're running 
enough to have 10 things that I'm going to mill out for 10 life? Dude, think about it. If you pull that out... That means I need, I need to get 40 things on the on, on the board in order to get everybody out in, in a timely manner. Hmm. Oh, it's only 10 life. Hmm. Yeah. yeah but I'm just like... You'll if I could take, if I could have board. forty life to attack one opponent with, then we're talking to something else entirely. But <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still even... thinking sealed. But like <sighs> this card, though, it's free. It's basically free. You're, if so, we're talking, well, to so that... why not play Parhelion for free? Get the eight out. That's going to give you another eight damage, flying and vigilant on the board, and it... then just start crewing it with whatever you want from Vivian. Because you don't have anything else. I mean, I guess. I guess. You just said I have 10 things that I'm all of a sudden going to sacrifice just from putting Bolas' Citadel out for free. I'm just so saying Bolas' wh- Citadel I- will let you get the bodies. Parhelion, you don't have anything right now. You're saying that Arkbo will but let I, you eventually. I, 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 well, no. I'm saying you could play that like when it goes out because it's X-Tap and discard. We're only losing our graveyards. Now I have big giant thing out, so I crew it. Hmm. And I can crew it for probably less than it would cost to get Bolus of Citadel, and I don't need to wait to have 10 permanents to get rid of. Hmm. Now, the question is, is this the same deck that we were just talking about, Phil? Yes. Is this the well, same deck? Well, not necessarily the, the Planeswalkers deck, but it's still Niv on the top. Right. It's still Niv Mazette, but it does not mean <laughs> that it's a Super Friends or Planeswalker style deck. Okay. Well, I'm assuming that since you've got Arkbo and uh, Parhelion, that this is probably a creature heavier deck. Um, I don't know. I feel real i feel real challenge i mean you might be right i, I think you could be right but it's just, i don't disagree that bolus citadel, citadel has a place and it has decks that it is going to be so stinking op oh yeah some aristocrat some token thing then you've got mm. all kinds of triggers you've got all kinds of things that it can do just looking at these three cards though i see parhelion out on the field i attack i can i mean it'll be easy enough to crew if you, your next play is vivian Give me a CMC of four or five. You can probably find something with the four power that's going to crew sure. it. And you're still paying less than the Citadel. And you still don't have to lose 10 permanents just to hit them for 10 life. I mean, it's 25%. Don't get me wrong. But again, that's still. No, you're right. You're right. 30 or anything. I, I misread that bottom line on uh, Citadel. But I just, I have a hard time giving up all that free value, though. I, listen, I again, I I. I agree with now, you completely also, that there is value in this card. I don't think it's the value. I that am of for three. the black card, and you are for the green card. I was, I was just, I was going <laughs> to note that if you two didn't. <laughs> I, hey, I can run Abzan, and I, I'm again <laughs> looking at five color Niv Mizzet and seeing what the Citadel's bringing to the table. I'm not convinced that it's the best play. Mm. Fair that, uh, you know, I can see it. I think you're a good. I think you've got a good point there. Because I don't know if I'm sold on Parhelion, but I think you're right about Citadel maybe not being the value that I think it would be in this deck. In this deck, yeah. In a, yeah. in myriad other decks, Citadel is just like yeah, the cause absolute like, put it on the battlefield yesterday. Arkmo is such a... <laughs> put it on the battlefield yesterday. <laughs> and I think... No, but I don't disagree that Arkbo is kind of wonky too. I just think out of these things that Arkbo and Parhelion actually can work pretty well together because for less than either of those other cards with the arc bow, you can find a four power creature Fair. crew that thing and then get again, eight flying and vigilant on the board. That's also tapped in it or that's also attacking. So are the two of you aligned now? And yeah, what, what so. is we, that? We don't alignment? have to be, but I, I'm, I'm no, the only way this show ends is if you're aligned on this page. I, I, you know, I, she makes a good, she makes a good argument though. So I think I, I think I am willing to concede the point. Hmm. Well, I mean, would you, do you think with this deck you would go, you'd exile Vivian, have Parhelion in your hand and then sit it all? I was living in magical Christmas land. And you thought, that Sid- you thought it did. You thought Citadel did way more damage than it yeah, did. Yeah, I thought Citadel you? did a lot. More. I thought it was doing like half damage, not just ten. And 10 see, I, I think if it was something like that, that it would be worth just having it out there. But the only problem is that it's still an artifact that's just going to be sitting there. Like, it's a target. It is this giant beacon of I'm coming for you in a second. <laughs> and it's like yeah. you have that second to be like, Fair. hey, here's something that needs Fair. to get get gone real quick. I guess I was just undervaluing Arcbow a lot. Um, Maybe card... you weren't. I could be completely <laughs> off base. I just I like no, no, looking I at these three. I think that's how they play it out. 
I want to give that card a try because, like, spell shapers. Oh, I'm yeah. always a really kind of hesitant on because I don't like discarding cards, even yeah, if you're see, getting an effect. Either. I have a real hard time being like, oh, bird in the hand versus one in the bush. You know, it's like that out of being hand. said. I, I see what you're saying there, but in these colors and Abzan especially, I'd be a lot less worried about that. That and she bottoms the other cards, and that's a real, real bear in EDH. Is it? When, like, you look, you're never going to see them again. You don't, I mean, but how many tutors do we run in EDH? Yeah. Plus, now you know where they are, which is all the difference I guess in the world. If because you put now you put call in this deck. <laughs> Ta-da! We brought it full circle. Yeah. All right. So is that uh, what? Where, where does okay. Vivian Zarkbo go? Egg. Okay. So Bolas is the diddle. Exile. Yeah. Parhelion out on the battlefield. Vivian is your in hand card that you can cast, tap, get your big creature to crew the Parhelion, and start swinging. Wow. Word. Wow. Okay. How crazy is it that you exiled the black card, Olivia? Listen. It's and you were forced. Wor- to- it's Look, wild when world out there. When you're when you're a black player, you know that there's times you just gotta sacrifice your friends. Sometimes you that hey, listen, the ambition runs deep, and if it's self betrayal, sometimes it's just what it takes. Look, man, <laughs> it was either gonna be exiling you or exiling me, and I'm you know, gonna I think exile we both you. Agree that it's gotta be Bye. you. Bye. <laughs> 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 wow, <G-G>, homie. <laughs> yep. And uh, forced to play a white and green card combination there. That's. <laughs> I don't know if I'll uh, recover you, I, from this episode. I don't, I don't know. When the value's there, sometimes you just you just got to take what's in front of you. And if That's it's right. green-white, I don't have to like it. I just have to be good with it. As long as it wins, man. Exactly. Yeah. See? <laughs> and there's the black mage spirit, ambition and power at any kind. Yeah, look at that. As long as it wins. I never thought I'd hear that from Shiva. I can't. I'm like I, I can't even him, speak. I'm smiling so hard. I made so Shivam hard. like Cyclonic Rift. Like it's a crazy thing we've done this <laughs> these past couple of weeks. This world is just changing around us. Yeah. What's next? The Lazav deck. Come on, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, for me, I was like, that's not off, like off base at all. What do you? <laughs> I am not. This, there's no turbo mill in this house. <laughs> well, you should play Lazav, Shivam, and Olivia. You should play. Um, uh, I'll play a... Oh no! I see. I would have too much fun because I had a Sagrada Voltron for a hot minute. Uh, make me play Amara, and I'll I make will... Amara. Reese. Yeah. Reese the... Oh, Reese the Redeemed. Reese Redeemed. Oh yeah. Or Ugh. Tristani. Oh my God! Why? Why? Don't say these things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you like life gain. I do, but I like it when I can simultaneously Drain you make first. someone pay for it, my life gain at the same time. That's yeah, indeed. Her life gain is Treasury Thrall. Well, <laughs> Treasury Thrall is pretty good. That card is um, bananas. Well, thank you so much for joining us, listeners and viewers. <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoyed our preview card of Ella Domri's Call and hope you enjoyed uh, Exile Battlefield Hand uh, because I, I think we'll we'll do that again. There was a lot of controversy on that. That was definitely fun. No, really I actually cool. liked I that. that. That was good. Oh, ah, yeah. cool. Cool. Uh, I had no idea. We had, um, yeah, uh, we have another one um, kind of in the can, so we'll, or queued up, I should say, and we'll spring it on uh, our listeners and viewers at some point. Yes. Um, so if you like what you just watched or heard, then uh, please consider donating a buck a show per month, or per month, rather, uh, as, so we can keep on improving the show, including learning our lines, both at the beginning and end of the show. Um, you can now just go to commander at mtg.com slash donations and hey. we have streamlined. Yeah. You can choose to donate through PayPal, GoFundMe, or uh, Patreon, of course. And uh, we do appreciate all of your donations and um, uh, incredibly grateful. Special thanks to all of the people who are our patrons right now. Thank you so much. Um, they already show their support and we could not do this show without you. We, Shivam and I have lights that are blinding us off to the side, thanks to our uh, patrons. And um, and a special thanks to Wizard of the Coast for providing us with this free preview card today. We uh, genuinely yes, yes. appreciate it, and we are grateful for all the previews that we get to bring you. It's super cool, one of the best parts of being this. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wizards. Uh, we probably should have said that throughout the show just because of regulations, but uh, here we are. Um, so, uh, special... Sorry? 
Oh, okay. Special thanks to Nate Burgess for writing the theme song for the show. Uh, and uh, Mike Condon, who uh, did the guitar riff version of the theme song. And, of course, Tyler Webb, who is providing us with episode backups online for the inevitable server change that seems to be put off month to month for six months now. Tyler and his friend Chris are co-hosts of the Unformatted Review Show, and you should check it out because it's uh, not family-friendly at all, but it is pretty funly. Fun, yeah, funly? Friendly. It's pretty funly. You should check it out. <laughs> oh, and no, uh, thank Nailed you to it. Olivia Guest Host for joining us once again for like <laughs> the 14th month in a row. Uh, if y'all don't know, Olivia and her crew have been uh, streaming every Tuesday EDH yes. games. Um, I got to join in on one of them. And I believe it's like a rotating fourth chair of people who just jump in. Yeah, and, pretty much. Yeah, it's super cool. And uh, you guys should check out her channel. It's totally worth it. And in the middle of the day, if you feel like some ASMR dentist drills, she does carving of her <laughs> It's pretty great. Hey, what is your Twitch uh, handle? Or how can people find you on Twitch? We never On uh... Twitch, I am twitch.tv backslash or whatever slash it is um affinity artifacts all one word like affinity for artifacts just get rid of the four all right i'm gonna write that in the show plan so we never forget it again yay um and you can find us on twitter if you uh are only just coming to the youtube channel and don't follow us on twitter please do we're at commander and mtg on twitter and individually on twitter again we are uh i'm at ketjack k-e-t-j-a-k I am at Girapuri Gears, G H I R G H I R A P U R I G E A R S. Today is my third anniversary of that account, Yay. according to Twitter. And, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I'm at Guest Host, which is at G O B E R T H I C K S. Go for kicks. That was a joke. <laughs> Good joke. Well, uh, Olivia, as the uh, the person who is most guest like on the show right now, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you can uh, take us out with a, a phrase, either one that's provided or one you choose all your own. Got one, Commander. Uh, After lightning struck the cliffs, the ore became iron, the iron became steel, and the steel became greaves. The lightning never left. Ooh, whoa, that's really good. That's really nice. Also, that card is really good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, Gavin Verhey here, Senior Game Designer and Product Architect at Wizards of the Coast on Magic. And as the kind of person behind all things Commander, as the Product Architect whose job it is to work on Commander, something I've been working on a lot is making sure that every set has Commander appeal. And Modern Horizons is absolutely no exception. In a set that's full of things for modern players all across the board, of course a lot of those cards are going to naturally be strong enough for your commander decks. From Wild New Legends, have you even seen Urza? All the way through a lot of just staple cards that will show up in decks for years to come. One of those cards, of course, is your preview card, Eladomri's Call, which is a reprint, so you've had a chance to play with it for a while. But I was really excited that we were able to get that card into more players' hands. I talked with Adam Prozac, lead designer of the set, a little bit about it. And, you know, to him, it was just a natural fit. They looked for a while at different cards they could reprint from different eras of Magic. And this was a card that, one, had a shot at Modern. It's very possible that it'll be pretty good at tutoring up um, strong combo pieces in a Malira-style deck or something similar. But two, it's just a really popular card. It's a very appealing card. It's a great commander card. And it actually found its way into the file really early on and never really changed. I mean, they considered a few different cards for the role, but everyone was just really excited about the kind of decks this could create, the kind of toolbox strategies that, that could do in Modern, as well as just the excitement of bringing this one card back. 
and for all you commander players gives you another shot at picking up Eladomri's call. Hopefully you're all enjoying the set. It's one of the coolest things I've ever got the chance to work on. It is a wild magic set to me. It is a love letter to magic. It's all the things I love about Future Sight, Time Spiral, and Planar Chaos, with a lot less of the nonsense, but still enough nonsense that you'll enjoy it, a weird mix of mechanics, and stuff that people will be talking about for ages. So I hope you all enjoy, and have a great time playing Modern Horizons. Talk to you all soon. Let's see, let's stop that recording. Thank God the recording was going. Oh shit, mine wasn't. I'm just kidding, it was.